Hi everyone, my name is Angelica and today we're going to be doing our fifth virtual heart to art lesson on mannerism art. Before we start learning about manneristic art, let's take a look at the time period in which it was created. Mannerism is the artistic style that predominated in Italy from the end of the High Renaissance in the 1520s to the beginning of the Baroque style in around 1590. What does mannerism mean? The word mannerism derives from the Italian maniera, meaning style or manner. Mannerism launched a highly imaginative period in art following the climax of perfection that paintings had reached in Renaissance Italy. Artists in 16th century Florence and Rome started to change from classical influences and moved towards a more intellectual and expressive approach. This ushered in a switch from authentic portrayals of subjects and figures, a rejection of harmony, and the development of a dramatic new style unconfined by reality or literal correctness. New discoveries in science had led society away from humanist ideals, and paintings no longer pictured man as the center of the universe, but rather as isolated participants in the great mysteries of life. Now that we know the time period in which mannerism art was created, now that we know the time period in which mannerism art was created, we can take a look at where it originated. The mannerist style originated in Florence and Rome and spread to Northern Italy and ultimately to much of Central and Northern Europe. Can we find Italy and Europe on the map? Let's take a look. If you guessed that this is Europe, then you'd be correct. And this right here is Italy. You can tell by the iconic boot shape. Now, what languages do they speak in Italy? In Italy, they speak Italian. Now that we've learned about the origin and the time period of mannerism art, we can finally take a look at mannerist artists. Mannerist artists emerged from the ideals of Michelangelo, Raphael, and other late Renaissance artists, but their focus on style and technique outweighed the meaning of the subject matter. Often figures had graceful, elongated limbs, small heads, stylized features, and exaggerated details. This yielded more complex, stylized compositions rather than relying on the classical ideals of harmonious composition and linear perspective used by their Renaissance predecessors. For today's art project, we will be focusing on scale and proportion. In mannerism, artists painted their figures with exaggerated features, and in this project, we will do the same. Grab some paper and a pen or pencil and sketch something that would otherwise be small, bigger. For example, this baby chick. Then draw something that would be big, small, like the farmer. This creates a contrast in scale and proportion. Thank you so much for joining me on our fifth virtual heart-to-art lesson. I hope you learned something new and had fun along the way. See you next time.